Thank you for joining us. Community Manifesto coming to you live from the Ayawaso West Wogong constituency. As you can already hear, the atmosphere well heated, and I tell you that we're going to make sure cool heads prevail for this great conversation. The Ayawaso West Wogong constituency, according to the statistical service own numbers from the 2021 census, looks to be the most literate constituency across Ghana. At least I know we have 94% in excess of the numbers being literate when it comes to the population made up of young people especially. And across board, we already know that we already know that over 84% of the constituents of Ayawaso West Wagon do, do their trade in the service sector. Then about 14% of these constituents are in the industrial sector. What is quite intriguing is the voter population. According to the statistical service, the numbers as recorded by way of the population of the Ayawaso West Wogong constituency is in excess. Based on the 2021 census, 75% in excess, growing at a percentage of close to 3%. Then we have the voter population in excess of over 120,000. We're here to have a great conversation. So let me have um, those on my right or left do the introduction, please. I'm Alaji Isa Sedu Sawadogo, Constituency Secretary, Iowa Su West Wogon. Okay, are, are you an Alaji? Yes, I'm an Alaji. Okay, so I can call you Alaji Isa. All right, Alaji. Alaji Isa, you are the Constituency Secretary for the MPP. Yes, please. Well, I could see. Here is blue. Okay, so please call, uh, give, give it to Chairman for me. My name is Alaji Osman Idrisu, Constituency Chairman. All right. Alaji Osman Idrisu, who is the Chair, Chairman for the MPP for the Constituency. Now, my name is David Anole Jame, Assistant Secretary for the... David Anole Jame. Anole Jame. I want you to say Anole Jame. Anole Jame. Great. I've said it. I'm right. Because usually you mention what Dragox is a Senko, but you don't mention the Ghanaian name, so I want you, you to... Thank you very much. <laughs> Anole Jame. Thank you very much. And then let me also have you introduce yourselves. Please introduce yourself for me. Please introduce yourself. We are on air. Please introduce yourself. You have the mic. Thank you. My name is Bismarck Abobi Aite. I am the constituency chairman for Ayawaso West Wogon. Okay, Mr. Aite. Uh, my name is John Dumelo. I'm the incoming member of parliament for Ayawaso West Wogon. Okay, so the parliamentary candidate of the NDC for Ayawaso West Wogon, please. My name is Victoria Naima Abdullahi, the Constituency Women Organizer. I didn't get your last name. Victoria Naima Abdullahi. Okay, Abdullahi. Victoria Abdullahi. Yes, please. All right. Now, Alaji, let me begin with you. Um, what do you think are the developmental issues that have been tackled over the last couple of years in the Iowa who was working? Because currently, I know that um, the MPP is hosting the incumbents, Lydia Al Hassan, who is also the Minister of State, as we have it currently. And uh, that question then to you, looking at the structure, the demographics of the constituency, Iowa to West Wogon. Thank you very much, and uh, good morning to your cherished viewers, and good morning to all the constituents gathered here to witness this important program. Uh, this is a good day for us as a party. I think to account to the people what we have done for the past four years when Honorable Lydia assumes power. I think uh, it's a very good opportunity for us to make sure a lot of people know what is going on. Uh, first, of, first and foremost, first and foremost, our MP has tackled a lot of developmental projects. One of it can, and the evidence of it all, it is this shed that we are sitting under, was built by the my shed, own MP. The shed we this are shed. on, constructed by the yeah, MP. Yeah, by, by the MP. It was, it was, it was non-existent. She came, identified that the community and the chiefs don't have a dead background. So because of that, she took the opportunity and built this shed. 
So that's one work she has done. So it is uh, the MP who is hosting uh, who, us. Yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> this road that we have seen, it was a pure. What she came and tied this road for us. The whole entire Balashi community has been asphalted, not not total, asphalted. When you move 100 meters from here, getting to the public toilet, she has put down a 5,000 liter poly tank for for the that, community. There's a 5,000 liter poly tank for the community. During supply COVID. water. Water, water for the community during COVID to get free water. When you move from here, the next community, which is Mimpasam community, Mimpasam community, all the entire road of Mimpasam was initiated and built by Honorable Lydia Saram Alassan. When you come to Mimpasam again, when you go to Mimpasam, there is currently a brand new constructed 20 bed hospital built by Honorable Lydia Saram yeah, Alassan. That's a hospital constructed yeah, hospital, yes. at Mimpasam. Yes, yes, it will be commissioned, it will be commissioned by the end of this year. Hopefully, it will be commissioned by doing the. Is there a the, private facility or going to be managed by the Ghana Health Service? It's Ghana Health Service. We are now trying to get the, or the accreditation. Facilitated by the member, yes, of parliament. By the member of parliament. We are trying to get the accreditation from the health centre so that we can be able to merge the business. When you move, when you move, when you move, when you move to Star Village, I'm giving you community by community. Each and every community has been tackled by the benevolence of Honourable Lydia Seram Alassan. With, with, a, with, with an influence and with a level of resources that she has been able to capitalize. Hold on, 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 hold on. You, are, you, you have three more minutes, three more minutes, yes, please. Let, 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 you continue, no yes, worry. When so, you speak, we directly hear when, you on when you, when you go to Star Village, which is a nice community. Where you go where? Star Village, local Star Village. Is the next Megan Star Village. Yes, it's the next community after Mimpasam. She has built a ultra modern uh, computer library, which is ICT library, and a six room classroom block, brand new, which was commissioned. When you come to Legon Star Village itself, there is a community center at the Star Village quarters that has been built by our honorable minister. Let's go to Legon. The Lego entire Lego project. Our Honorable Lydia has established a 10,000 litre water project with borehole at Saba Hall. At Saba Hall, 10,000 litre. 10,000 litre borehole. 10, 000, a borehole with a 10,000 litre polytank. And that is where? That borehole? That Saba Hall. Saba? Yes, yeah, Saba. At Lego, the University Lego. of Ghana. And all the, the hostels and the rooms have been provided with ceiling fans to cool down the place for the students. The member of parliament provided ceiling, ceiling fans, fans to, the to all the hostels. All the hostels oh, yes, in, in the, the University of Ghana. Campus, yes. Honorable leader in Legon has provided the security. You have a minute. Please wrap up. The, the, she has provided the Legon security with motorbikes, car, street lights to be able to calm down security within the, the, the entire uh, this is Legon campus. She has also provided financial support to the students she has provided full support to the students. She has helped the community. All, almost about 1,500 youth were trained with driving school. And about 1,500 thousand, youth were trained. Over, over 1,500 were okay. trained okay. in youth in driving. At least about 1,000 of them. All the communities. All the community. And some of them have gotten Your their, time is up for now. I know that. The, no, the, I need more time because I am in power. I need to tell the people what our yes. honorable has done for them. Yes. When you go to. Why you go to Shashi? I like it. I'm not disputing her. I'm, we just, I'm timing everybody. Let's be fair we are, to each other. We have built a so, so the next Shashi, round, Alaji, Alaji, the next round, thank you, you continue on with the achievement. Thank you. Is that not it? Yes, Do yes. we have the agreement? Yes, yes. All yes. right. Thank you very much. Now, let me, let me have the, memo, uh, the parliamentary candidate. Please give the mic to the parliamentary candidate for me. Um, the, I'm, I'm just listening to Alaji here. And I'm thinking, well, if I was a constituent of Iowa so West Wogo, I'll say, Anya Obeya Dieng. They say Lydia has done everything. What do you think gives you the impetus based on what you have found out in the communities that you think further need to be addressed? Because it looks like Lydia seems to have done everything for the people of Iowa so West Wogo. John Dumelo. Um, thank you so much. Um, first and foremost, I think 
First and foremost, I think I'm quite disappointed that Lydia didn't show up. As usual, she's running away like she always does from community engagement. What? Lydia always runs away from community engagements. Lydia always runs away from community engagements. That is the first one. And so... Please, please continue to talk. I mean, and so... And please, Mr. Dumalo, please continue. We can hear you directly, no, but live but on air. He, when he was talking, none of my people were making noise. And so if that is what is going to continue, respectfully, I don't want to, to continue sitting down. Because one, leader is not here. Two, I'm talking, and then they are talking. And so I, I don't think they are being I there. understand you. Yes, so I, I mean... Please, I crave your indulgence. All of us, let's have a decent conversation. Please, both sides. Mr. Dumelo, you can continue. Now, I, I, I was listening to what he was saying. And I must say, I mean, they are all lies. Telling me that they've fixed funds in all the hostels on Legon campus. It is a lie. Number two, the hospital that has been built in Mimpasem was started, at, was started under Atamil's time. It is a lie. Number three. The hospital was started under the Atamils. regime of Atamil. Yes. Yes. Number three. Number three. Please continue, Mr. Dumelo. Please continue, Mr. Dumelo. Number three. He mentioned, he mentioned uh, uh, scholarships for students. But if he doesn't know the scholarships for students, if he doesn't know, I started scholarships for students in 2012. They can go and Google it. Even before she became MP, they can go and Google it. They can go and Google it. You claim you started yes, back in 2012. The University of Ghana scholarships are started in 2012. So they can go and Google it. Even before Lydia became mem member of parliament. And so all that he's saying are lies. And I really wish Lydia was here. But as usual, she's going to run away from all their efforts. Number four, almost all the achievements he's spoken about. Mr. Dumelo, please continue. The noise doesn't affect what we are hearing on air. The mic is number unidirectional, four, please. Number four, in 2020, when I decided to do the drains at Westland, Lydia came to stop me. You two, attempted doing drains? Yes, the drain, the drainage system in Westland. Lydia stopped me. Why? I don't know. And then in October, she said she was... Mr. Dumelo, continue. I just want to ask Lydia if she was here. I mean, I look, if this is how they are going to do, then I don't think there's no point in continuing. Please continue. We're hearing no, you Roland. live on air. Roland. Okay. In October 2020, she promised the people of Ayawasu West Wagon she's going to do the drains. Where are the drains? She, promi she yes. promised. Yes. She we took a group of engineers. The drains where? To the place. Where are the drains? The uh, Westland area. Westland, yes. And she said she was going to construct the drains. Where are the drains? She's sanitation minister. Have you seen how dirty Ayawasu West is? The only thing she does... Please continue. The only thing she does is to share rice, oil, gari, and, and corn. Yesterday, she was in Okonglo sharing corn. A sanitation minister. Whilst the gutters are dirty, whilst the people didn't have water, yesterday I started sharing water. If she didn't see me sharing water, would she have also started sharing water? No. And so you can see at this point, the people of Ayawa West have given up on her, one. Number two, all she does is to share money, share money, gari, oil, and sardine. Is this also an MP? There's a, 
there's a consideration or an observation. Yes. It's about, it looks, or it looks to me, based on the observation, yes. water provision yes. or flow of tap water yes. is a problem. Why? Yes. Have you identified I, No, that? I think you should ask Lydia, because she didn't foresee there will be a water shortage. And she didn't foresee she has to give the residents water. Uh, Alaji over there spoke about free water. I started free water in 2020 during the COVID time. I started free water during the COVID time. That is me sharing water. Why don't we have water in a, a very I think if you ask the water resources minister, if she's not incompetent, I don't think there wouldn't have been water because we need water in Ayawasu West Wogod. We need water around the, in, in the whole of Ghana, but there's still no water. Look at me sharing water. And where is Lydia? Because of her incompetence, there's no water flowing. Please continue. You do not, you do not, you do not shut the taps and later come and give the people rice and gari for them to do what? You do not, you, you do not shut the taps. As water was, as water resources minister, you are supposed to make sure the taps are flowing. And so what kind of incompetent MP do we have? MPP have been in Ayawa Suez for almost 30 years. What is there to show? You are sanitation minister. The gutters are still dirty. The water is not flowing. Yet you come and share gari and sardine and charcoal to the people. You think the people are fools? The people are no fools. Don't you share items? You have a minute to do this. Don't you also I'm share? I'm in government. If I had the power, and if I was minister of sanitation, and if I was minister of sanitation and works and uh, water resources, I would make sure there's water. Now, do we have a water crisis in Iowa so West Wogo, Alagi? Thank you. Who wants to speak? You want to speak? Thank you very much. You, you still want to speak or you want to give it to the next person? Oh. Thank you very if much. If you speak, I go back to them. Thank you very much. First of all, first of all, what I want the people to know, what I want the Iowa people to know is that the NDC candidate is an AI-generated candidate. You said the NDC candidate it's is an what? an AI-generated candidate. AI-generated candidate. candidate. He does his things on a very... He's not, he's not a serious person. Look, let me tell you. He said that he doesn't. He said that he doesn't believe in intellectuals. First of all, this constituency, as you said, by a statistic, that 95 percent of the constituents are educated, and he is saying that he doesn't believe in intellectuals. Secondly, let me tell you, as a responsible minister of sanitation and water, what she did was that it's not to provide a temporary solution. What she did is that she dug a borehole with 10 litre, with 10,000 litre mechanized borehole with, with polytank at Mimpasam community. She dug a borehole at Shashi. At Shashi. She dug a borehole. Yes, yes, she dug a borehole at Tiva, that's applied science, with, with 20,000 litre capacity water, water, a polytank. She dug a borehole at the prison's community. A Roman rich prisons, Buster area. She dug a mechanized borehole with 10,000 litre polytank. So therefore, her responsibility as a minister. She even did most of this thing before she became a minister. We are not saying we will solve the problem of this constituency. But what we are saying is that between Lydia and their candidate, Lydia stands tall. She stands ahead of him in terms of her policy, her programs, in terms of her policy, her programs, her influence and her resourcefulness. Lydia stands tall above him. So therefore, she's the best person to lead this community. She's the Lydia Al-Hassan is, is the best person to lead this person community. To represent looking Ayawa at the West capacity Wogo. of the people in this constituency, looking at the educational level of the people in this constituency, we need somebody who understands, who will uplift the lifestyle and the development of the community to a higher level. We are not mediocre people. Lydia has identified that most of the community people are vulnerable. We see all the nice houses. We still have squatters around. Who needs help? They don't need so help. So there are squatters in the community. There are squatters in the community. Which areas are they in the electoral areas? We go to rural development, which is North Legon. Part of Shiashi, we have squatters. 
and part of Okonglo, we have squatters. Part of Dowlu, we have squatters over there, which is 138. Uh, no, uh, we have squatters over there. So she has identified that these squatters need help. She has provided them with financial support to aid them with their business, to make sure they establish themselves and move out of... In many Russia. of these squatter communities. Yes, she okay. has provided them with financial support, not less than 1,000 cities each. For a pe pe people living in the slum area. She, she gives direct money yes, she gives as them loans or uh, no, grants. Money. They are grants. Yes, they are grants. To support them, to aid them with their business, to be able to uplift their, their life. From their to, poverty yes, status. Yes. Okay. And she has provided them you with have a, a minute. Yes, she has okay. provided them with a temporary solution. This that is what he's saying. I am happy he has acknowledged that the Honorable Lydia has helped the constituents with 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 with, 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 booths, with uh, foodstuffs which is very good for all of us. We all understand that things are not rosy as we want it to be. But we have the chance to develop this constituency more than the NDC candidate, which I say is an AI-generated candidate. Whatever he does, all the projects we have done on evidence base that are on the panel here that we brought, all the ceiling fund we have mounted in every hostel is on the banner here. So evidence. So when your camera shoots to that banner, Please you wrap see, up for me. You see most of the project that I'm telling you. So therefore, he's not also a truthful person by saying that. Because if he has his first right, he, there's no way he will know that Lydia has provided those facilities to the schools. Lydia has been provided them with transport. Anytime the students are vacating, they are going home. She's a mother. And she feels she provides the students. the students on the university campus. Yes, transport, when transport. they are vacating. So she has done most of social intervention. We have the STEM school, one of the best and ultra modern STEM school built in our constituency, led by Honorable Lydia. We have AstroTef for the youth to develop their, their Please sport. Please wrap up for me. We have AstroTef in the prison service. We have an AstroTef. When you go to a black bay, we have an AstroTef. How many AstroTefs are here? We have two AstroTef. Those are to build the youth development in their talent. We have a skill training program for women in trade and women uh, youth in driving. We have those things. So this is a woman who is poised and she has the people at heart. She's a woman who has touch base with everybody. She's not arrogant. She's a mother who has a, a mother feeling for everybody. So therefore, I believe that Thank you, Honorable you. Lydia stands tall. Two years in her parliamentary life, two years in the parliamentary office, she has attained the head of the parliamentary caucus, which is the minority, majority leader. Deputy Majority, two years in Alanyi, parliament. Please wrap up and for me. If two years, years, two years. Please wrap up She for has me. attained the office. Be fair to me. Wrap up. Majority leader. All right. Another year, she has been also given. So there's a, a ministerial a, appointment. This there's shows an important that issue that has been raised. Caliber. That and Lydia Alassane has been able to develop the community in such a way. You go around all the various electoral areas, asphalted. There is even a STEM school. There, there are astro tests in the communities. And so, because it is an elite community, it looks like, apart from water, he says, everything has been sorted out. He is also somebody who is empathetic because she's a woman, and he also says he's a mother. It, these are key values and features that will be difficult for anybody to well, counter. thank you very much. How, and thank how, you how can, to how all can your that be viewers who are watching us this morning. We are at a crossroad and all we need is change. We need change in Iowa so West Wagon. And the bold solution for this change is Honorable John Seto Dumelo and His Excellency John Domani Mahama, Lydia Al Hassan, who is currently a minister. A, a minister of government has done nothing for this constituency, but has brought us pain. He has brought our mother's pain. He has brought children pain. Today, if you want to access a market, you have to go to Medina Market. You need to go through traffic to be able to purchase goods, to sell in a retail store that has been provided, even by an uncle or an auntie, or a relative. I don't understand. This is an elite community. So the way it's been structured, you don't necessarily would need the type of market that is in Medina. No, Roland, I don't agree with you. If you tell me it's an elite constituency, you are sharing data with us. 
if you look at this constituency, it is densely populated with Scottists. And they are also part of this constituency. And so you don't expect that somebody who is a Scotter will be able to afford goods and services that is being provided under very high conditions. That is not what we want. We are in a constituency where you need to assess hospitals and you don't even have to assess it with NHIS cards. University of Ghana Hospital, you need 1,000 Ghana cities as a deposit to be able to access So you are saying it is facility. expensive to live in the constituency. It is very expensive to live in this constituency. We are in Baoleshi. This is Baoleshi. It is a densely populated area. But ask me, how are the people able to survive in this constituency, in this part of the constituency? It is not about roads. The roads are very important. The water is very important. But still we have shortages in these densely pop populated areas. The whole idea of bringing John Seto Dimelo and His Excellency John Damani Mahama is to transform and improve on the development that was done under the NDC government. The Atraco schools that were brought here, the Baulesi public toilet here was instituted by Atamils and even some of the important facilities here, the prisons, was instituted under the NDC So you're government. saying that the populations that are within the segregated squatter communities. Yes. Based, they yes. need better attention. No, it's not about needing better attention. It is about needing equal attention. Equal attention. Equal attention. That because is what we're talking about. Because they are also part of the community. They also help to safeguard the community. They are members of the community. They are members of the constituency. And they deserve equal rights. They deserve equal access. They need also, they also deserve equal access to hospitals. The National Women's Bank, that His Excellency John Damani Mahama, which is going to be spearheaded by Honorable uh, hey, hey, Professor Nana Jane of Okwajiman, is going to employ females. And therefore, hear me, hear me. The good news, every member of Ayawa Suwe Swagon, if you are listening to me, the good news is that National Women's Bank is going to be stated and reinstated here. In Ayawasu West Wagon, our micro loans, micro service loans that were giving us now, opportunities to have money to do business have been collapsed. Madam. And therefore, in place of that, we are bringing the National Women's Bank, which is going to employ only women from so security to So manager. because you are bringing the National Women's yes, Bank, it's going to influence the people in Ayawasu West Wagon to live better lives. We need it. Okay. And therefore, yeah. when the markets are here, every single member of the community who happens to own a share of the market will assess a bank loan at minimal interest Please wrap up with the me. initiative of the National Women's Bank to aid in the East and also to help women to alleviate their poverty in the constituency. All right. So, um, Mr. Dowan, at the end of the day, because, because this constituency is an elite constituency, is there the observation by Lydia Al Hassan, the incumbent member of parliament, and your team that special attention are being paid to the deprived areas, which are let's say smaller in number in the constituency. What is being done? Is it just good enough to be giving them grants? A thousand Ghana cities, for example, Alaji says is given by the MP so that it lifts people out of poverty and then they can live their lives. Is it just enough to be giving people grants? money or you want there's a special strategy to pay attention to the deprived areas in the constituency well uh, we the MPP from our record it's clear that we have focused in reducing poverty in Ghana and therefore we have an MP who believes in poverty reduction because that is number one development that we want so once you focus in elevating poverty we are doing development. So for us in MPP, all our projects like free secondary education, maternal care, shows that we are the party that believes in reducing poverty and hassle of the people. So what you're saying is that the way the demographic of Ayawaso is, the national policies are having a better bearing and impact on the population. Exactly. That is why it is developing but, the way it is. Yes. So um, I believe that politics is about um, ideas. 
So we as MPP has focused in developing this country and not on the basis of uh, rhetoric. I believe that Mr. John DiMello could have said what he could do by using this opportunity than running the minister down. You see, the water shortage we have had from Thursday was as a result of water outbursts in the Dodo Wall Street. S say that again. Yes. The water, the, the water difficulty, is yes. it a temporary issue? Or? It, it, was a temp it is a temporary issue and today it has been solved. So for you to say she is incompetent, that is far uh, If the water is a temporary issue, why do you dig boreholes and then you do polytank? Well, there are certain areas that are more, uh, there are a bit challenges. So in the interim, you have to provide them this water and it's a poverty reduction issue. Again, every, every single project we have mentioned to you is in the constituency and can be verified. So for my colleagues who believe that, just like Don Dramani Mahama said, that he, Ghanaians were blind because of Juju, maybe they, feel they are also blind because of Juju, so they could not see what we have done as a new patriotic part. Our honorable Lydia has worked tirelessly to reduce the suffering of our people during COVID and till date. As I am talking to you, over 5,000 women have received SME from the MP to support their businesses. 5,000 women have received 5, what? 5,000 women has received grant for poverty reduction. And they you were given 1,000 cities each. The, I said 5,000 people, women, and you can go on the street and you can verify this. This is reducing the suffering. Again, in finalizing my point, if you look at the NDC manifesto, they mentioned that yep. they will break Zongo Development Fund. In the history of the NDC, they have never had a project for the Zongo. They picked that from the MPP manifesto. And so it is wrong. They have never talked about digitalization, but they are talking about digitalization. So it is possible. We have the men. We have Thank the you knowledge. Your time we is love up. our country. Your time is I will up. continue winning for Ghana. Ghana. He He's saying that the perennial water issues and the national policies of the government itself, the policies of Nanado Dankwe Kufuado and Dr. Mahmoud Baumia have had a positive impact on the people. And that is why you look at the demographics, it's a very elite community, etc. Let's look at water and then the national issues. That, that could be a, a good argument. What do you say? Thank you. Um, if they understand that this community is elite community. Then they should keep quiet so that the elite will listen to us and take the best decision for this community. Walker, it was through His Excellency John Dramani Mahama that we were able to get water in this community. East Legon and East Envaros water project was completed by His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. The water source from where? From the Adenta area coming here. The Dodo Wapong water yeah. source. That is what John Dramani Mahama has done for the people of Ayawasu. So it's only the incompetent president and his team who preside over us and the water will not be flowing. This morning, John Dumelo has to bring water to the community. So if you have water and it is not flowing, just let the water flow. It has become a problem for the MPP. Let's put that aside. The community knows what His Excellency has done and what John Dramani Mahama is about to continue. This road we are talking about. Yes, constructed by the MPP, he says. No, it was done by NDC during the Arawa Soba election. During the Arawa Soba election. This road was constructed by John Dramani Mahama, the internal road. In when? The, that is 2015. So, you know, this road, I'm telling you, there was no asphalt in Bahia. Are you sure? He says that no. Lydia constructed it. Listen, too. they are lying. Lydia. He said Lydia constructed a shed. No, for the road. This road, the community knows very well. 
that is through his excellency that we had at fat in violation. During the bar elections, they came and put asphalt overlay on it. Okay, so there was an existing asphalt road. Existing asphalt, but because of vote, 2019 bar elections, they placed another uh, asphalt on it. That doesn't mean they constructed the road. Do you know something? This community, we are a municipality. When the Accra Metropolitan Assembly was handing over this municipality to us in 2018, we have government land. We even have a land dedicated for markets. The MP and the MCE, they have sold the land purposely for markets. They have sold it. When you go to Roma Ridge, yes. When you go to Roma Ridge, government lands that were supposed to serve the community, the MP together with the municipal and the MPP, through their land looting brigades, they have sold everything. Lands around Ridge. Yes, Ridge Airport, government land for the purpose of the assembly, including market land. They have sold it to individuals. These are the people we are talking about. I'm telling you for a fact, we have done so much for this community. When you go to Accra Training College, you have a minute. We please. have a demonstration school attached to the Accra Training College. When you come to biology, as part of Millennial School, we have a very big Millennial School over there under His Excellency. When you go to Legon, you will see Legon Medical Center constructed by the NDC. The Lydia Larson, the MP Common Fund, the husband took it. He couldn't account for it. Lydia inherited it. Our common fund, he Your could time not is up. account. So I am telling you for a fact. Hello, hello, listen to me. The hospital they are talking about. I have to listen to you speaking. On a and I'm telling the you. The hospital is not true. It's not true. How? A Jaco started it. Now is the minister, Greater Accra Health Directorate, who are building it. Are you the sure? Somebody is there. The signboard is there from here. Go and it see. is a Ministry of Health or Coordinated yeah. Council. Go and see the signboard. The contract. Yeah, they could not okay. do it. All right. They could not. Don't worry. Okay, so, Chairman. So, the, the hospital, who is building the hospital? The, the hospital that Alaji talked about. Alaji, who is building the hospital? No, no. Uh, no first of all, um, I have to clear some misinformation. Please go ahead. Number one, Honor Lydia Salon and Lassen have never run away from this debate. Number Honorable two, Lydia Lassan have never run away from this occasion. Has never run away, away from, from this, this conversation. Yes. What is the story? Yes. Why is she not here? Because she's on national assignment to the president. That's she's a she's minister. Yes. Secondly, she's on a national secondly, assignment. My brother also said that we it was done there for this road. Can you ask him to provide the contractor who did this road? It was Mr. Jamina who provided who contracted this road. They don't know the contractor. I was there. I was at first asked when they got this road. So they shouldn't come and lie. Mimpa some land was bought by Honorable Ajaku, six thousand dollars, and it's been paid by him. Chairman so Chairman what are you talking about? We, have, we know the price. We know everything that is happening here. They don't know. If they were, we tell them. I want to assure them that Honorable the Senator Alassan is a people's person, is a people's man, and she is here to more do more development. As we speak, she has done ninety percent of the roads in the US. We are left with only internal roads on certain areas. But by God's grace, we are breaking the eight with the Dr. Mamu Rogomia, and we will do all. And I can assure you that Honorable Leader Sarah Lassan is a grassroots person. All the boreholes they are talking of, it's a request from the community. You know, him. There's a question about the boreholes. I keep asking, do we have pipe on water in Ayawaso West Wagon from a main water source, or, or we have boreholes in some of the communities? No, and why do we have that? Yes, you know, certain areas like OIC. They requested that they want borehole because that area, their lines are not working. So as an MP, he had to come for their help. That's why they are doing the boreholes. Apart from that, if I can show that the 90% of the roads have been done by Lona Lydia, what they are talking here, we are yet to do more. And I can show that the next chapter... To do more boreholes? Yeah, no, to do more, project, more projects. But I can show the next chapter. You know this community, we have 70 children institutions, but no secondary school. But as you speak, we have started doing with but uh, STEM, 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 STEM. Eh? And the next chapter, we are looking for a land to build a second school with all the days in his heart. As we speak, he's, we started another hospital from Mimpa, uh, 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 Abelengpe. Abelengpe, we started another hospital for Tetano. 
It's all of those that are coming up. And I can assure that we are not interested. And my race coming, there are no space for him. One only the Senator Lesson is the people's person and he's ready and the people are ready to make you continue. There's no space for John Demilo. We are here forever and we'll die forever. The seat is ours. You are, you are insisting the MPP is going to recapture the seat. Yes, we are going to take the seat at all costs. Yes. Thank you, Alaji. So um, give, give it to Sato. Give it give it to Mr. Mr. Dumelo. Mr. Dumelo, what do you intend to do for the constituents? I give you five minutes, then I go to the people quickly. What do you first, intend to do for the constituents? I think the first one is to make sure that I complete all the drainage systems in Iowa's drainage. West Wagon. Drainage is a big one. problem for you. The second one is to, to provide security. Security the third is one, more. Of course, because Iowa West is a very cosmopolitan area. The third one as well as possible, be able to provide a lot of accommodation for the university community around. I, is that a big problem, accommodation it's a for very the big problem. It's an extremely, Why? It's an, because a lot of students find it hard to get accommodation whenever they come to school. One of my top most priorities, accommodation, security, and then um, sanitation problem. Okay. But I want to say something. I can see their supporters mentioning V8, 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 V8. If that is the case, it's also fair to say that maybe Lydia is the one that killed her husband to become MP. Because that's it. Because if they want to go that tangent, I can also go that same tangent. Please let's not go that tangent. No, 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 no. If they want to go that tangent, I'll go the same tangent. Because this time around, it's good for boot. Because you cannot decide to be a black widow to, to go be boot member for of boot. parliament. Yes. If you smile, I smile back. If you slap, I slap you back. If you aim at me, I'll aim at you back. It's as simple as that. You, you are cannot, saying this you cannot be a is going to be an MPM. eye for an eye? Yes. It's as simple as that. Why? Why? Hello. Yes. I'm continuing from here. No. Let him. Please. Please. Give it to him. I, I have noticed that water is a perennial problem. Is it the water situation? Is it a temporary issue or not? I because mean a, because a, a, Ala, Alaji says a temporary issue. No, 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 no. The water is a temporary issue. Don't, don't yeah, yeah, but, yeah but, but a lot of people are still buying water in Iowa West Wagon every day. Day in, day out, they still buy a lot of So it shows how incompetent, incompetent Lydia is. Hello? Continue. So it shows how incompetent Lydia is. One, two, we are going to create a lot of employment in Iowa West Wagon. There are so many headquarters in Iowa West Wagon, from FDA to Standard to Boss to Ghana Gas to all the corporations here. And we are going to give employment to the people who live and work in Iowa West Wagon. All right, so let me take some comments. I take two comments here. I go and take two comments. Who has a mic here? Where's justice? Where's justice? Justice, what? who has a mic? Justice. No, justice. Control the mic for me. No. No, no, don't give the mic to... No. Yeah, but please control the mic for me. Control the mic. Okay. I take two comments here. Two comments on anything bothering you. Anything bothering you or any commendation you want to give anybody. So please go ahead. What's your name? Where do you live in the constituency? But my problem is, I'm a young entrepreneur. What's your name? My name is Kingsley. Kingsley. Asian. Kingsley. Kingsley. Yeah, from Abilinke. I'm a young entrepreneur. What I do is, when you see Abilinke traffic lights, there's a Canadian being section over there. Yes, Abilinke, when you're from the Fiesta Royal. No, when you're from 37, okay. coming to CP. The okay. traffic light there. There's a, a visa section, Canadian visa section. Okay. Just under the traffic light. What I do there is, I rent chairs for the people standing there. It has been there since more than a year now. There's some guy who, doing, who is doing that before I get there. I started about five months ago. Past two weeks ago, they came for our chairs from the assembly. Who came? The people the assembly from assembly? Task force. Yes, they came from our chairs. They said the MC said we should stop working over there. And I said, ah, how? This work we are doing, I've gone to the AMA. I want to take permits. They said there is nothing like that. That place is not under AMA. It's under AMA, uh, uh, I also work on. Okay, so the I municipal also assembly. Yes. Wagon municipality. Yes. I went there. I also West Wagon municipality. Yes, yes, yes. 
Ayawaso West Municipality, yes. I went there to do the permit for the work I'm doing over there. Mm -hmm. They said there is nothing like permit for us. Okay. Because it's not a temporary, it's not a permanent, permanent. something. Yes. It's a temporary something. So for past two weeks, they stop us not working. So you are not working? We are not working. My, my children that I work with, they are all in the house. But from Monday, I saw the task force working, the, doing the same work we are doing. Wait. Your work? The same after work. You were, your work, after you were scattered. Your work, after, after, after you were they evicted stop, after, after five they, months ago. After they stopped us for two, two weeks. Yes. We are in the house. But the task force of AME, which I know them, there's one guy who's he's called Ghana Baba. He told me play that it is from the assembly. The church they are renting there. Now, this morning, I went there to fight them. They That's, are doing your work. Yes. They are renting the church there. They evicted you and they are yes. doing your work. Yes. Hold on. To be fair, have you gone to the assembly to I've gone work? there. Even now, now. There was a lady who called me from the assembly. There's a lady who called me from the assembly. Somebody called you from the assembly. He said he, she is the, she is the MCA. She, she said the name is Sandra. So, if the honourables are here, they will check for us. Is it the work of the assembly to do that business, or is it the citizens who have to work and go and pay our tithes to the assembly? Okay, point to me. Thank point you. to me. Let me take the second one. Your name. I know what your issues are. Please, no fight. No fight. Relax. 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 Uh, thank you. My name is Ken Amwa. Uh, Daniel Asamwa. Ken. Ken Amwa. Ken Amwa. Yes. Ken. Go ahead. I'm part of the New Patriotic Party. I want to greet my constituents as a member and also, of the MPP. Yes. And also to Honorable Lydia Sarah Malhassan. She's been doing a fantastic job and God bless her so much. Lydia is doing a great job. Yes. She's doing a great job and God bless her so much. Um, you know, in. in in her, in her first 18 months in office, in her first 18 months in office, she did a great job. If you look at this brochure or this booklet that I'm holding right now, I can give you evidence based of the things she achieved in her first 18 months. Not to talk of the four years now. I want to correct two erroneous issues that John Dumelo mentioned. John Dumelo mentioned that the hospital being built at uh, Mimpasem here was started under John Evans Atamils. That's a lie. I want to tell him it's a that lie. it's a lie. It's a palpable were lie. Were you around during Atamils' time? Yes, I was around, and I have been here. I no. have been here. You are saying he's lying. He I'm lying. saying during Atamils' time, were you here? Yes, I was here. It's a lie. It's just around. You can go and see it. It's just around. Honorable Lydia Sarah Malhassan started the hospital, and hopefully it will be commissioned by the end of this year. And they also mentioned that this road was yeah, done road. by the NDC. Perhaps it was in their green book. They said, they said it, it was done and then there was inner road asphalting. Uh, uh, I mean, if the road was start and then it got, it got deplorable, it was nothing to write home about. It was, it was nothing to write home about. But it was asphalted, and then you, you see the state of it now. Honorable Lydia Al Hassan came to asphalt this road. This road, yes, it's a lie. So please, uh, I just want to tell the constituents that they should believe in Honorable Lydia Sarah Al Hassan. She has done a great job, and she is going to continue. It is possible. Ma Lydia for 2024. Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is going to win the 2024 elections. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amwa. Ken, Ken Amwa. I'll take two more comments from here. Who is the first person? Bosu Kena. Yes, sir. What's your name? Yeah, ma what are the issues? Please. Just okay. go back. Yeah. Your friend is Fuseni Kada. Fuseni Kada. First of all, no one question me and some. No one question me and some. The person who busa. In pain you follow. In pain you follow. No one need to cry. Honorable Lydia, we are far respect our money power. Omoa, identity. You are free PC. You are free chairman for. You are chairman for. We better PC than that. 
Okay. Okay. It is a right okay. of Honorable Lydia Alassane if she has the time to Mate come Mate for Mate not. Mate I'm told that she's on Mate a national assignment. Mate 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 Lydia, questions and want to mean in any move. Anything I want, man. I don't think I make a sign. My first question. I'm saying, 2019, I have a so high year. Problems you are. Hey, your problems, Ben. Eh, election. No, 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 election. No, 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 no. 2019, by election, by election, no, by election, no, who can shoot an incident, no, but just say, who can shoot an incident, no, okay, by election, hey, Azubu, Azubu, a creative problem, Adam Ayawaha, a year, you know, president, a year, and Kafosa, or Munsha, now, or Mufa, you and two years, or Mufa, you and two years, no, president. Eba say as a president, one pata, one more, or more piano. Ampa, up to now, ye wooing, ye nye isaku. Ta incident in the Yacha isaku nine, up to now. Anka, ye yenimun say, Honabu Lydia, the Atosu Mielu. Question, Mielu, ah, Atosu, Mufakoma Lydia, Mamma say. Tesiano, ye are twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four, ye are by election. And to the sea, and young Musa said, Sir, problem now, Bayano, and I'm more buying and a Lydia, a two far home, okay, Sikaya Casa Yancha Massa Boys. I was on the whole gun shooting incident. Matias, one more, one more. Aha, oh, how they say, Sir, how be an answer, a basubobia, obey me. What is the issue? All right, so I'm a student on the University of Ghana campus. You are a student, University of Ghana campus. Yes, what's your name? My name is Jonathan Atichobe. Jonathan Atichobe. Okay, so what course are you doing? I want Polit to be sure. Political science. Okay, go All ahead. Right. So my problem is, as an MP, you constitute the university management board. As an MP, you, you form the university management board. So if you are an MP, you constitute the university management board. And then the university is making decisions. The university is making decisions in terms of fees, accommodation fees. And you are the MP, you, are, you cannot speak on behalf of the student. Then what is your duty over there? That is the question we are putting to my Lydia. What is your duty over there as an MP? If you are MP and you have the student on your heart and you have to defend the student, you, you constitute the university board. You have to speak on behalf of the student. The students are going through high accommodation fees. School fees rise every semester. How much do you, you, you pay as school fees? Behalf. How much do you pay as school fees? My school fees, I pay 2,100. And now your hostel? Accommodation now is 5,820. OK, so the, the, the question I want to ask is, is the MP part of the investing board? Yes, you constitute the investing board. And whenever the investing is, is making decisions, is the MP part she's of part. it? Yes, please. That is the rule. The MP constitutes the investing board. So whenever the uh, investor is making decisions, she is also part. And then another question is, she is the MP for this constituency. And then the constituency who is an elect constituency. So if you are in parliament, and the parliament is making law on behalf of the student, and as an MP, you cannot speak on our behalf. So what is your duty over there? As an MP, you have to speak on students. So you want we, MP we to be doing more advocacy for the we students? We don't remember any single day that our MP will stand in public and defend your students. Your first name is what? Your name, Jonathan. Jonathan, yes. Okay, thank you very much. You've made your point. So we've got two points here. Um, can I get... All right. Please, please give the mic to this man. Give the mic to this man. Give the mic to this man. Oh, no, no, no. Talk. No. Ah, Talk. Hello, 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 hello. Please, please, please. Let the gentleman talk. Let the gentleman talk. Go in and talk. 
go in and talk. Let the gentleman talk, this man. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, sergeant, ser sergeant, let this man talk. Let this man talk. Let him talk. Let this man talk. Let this man talk, please. Okay, let me come here. Let me come here. Okay, sir. Um, is it possible? I know you have already told us that the MP is doing a lot for the students. What type of intervention does she do at the national level and then at the university community? Since yes. a, a chunk of the voter population, not necessarily the resident population of Ayawa so West Wago, are students to improve their lives, school fees, and do the policy intervention at the university. Oh, thank you very much. You know, Honorable Lydia Sarah Lesson is a mother for all. As a mother, you can ask every year there's Christmas scheme for University of Ghana and other tertiary institutions. Atraco, Legon, Newmark, all of them get questions from Honorable Lydia. Apart from that, when they are, uh, they are about to close, some they don't have food. He had to go there and provide them food to survive as a mother. So he's trying to he's doing a lot of intervention for them. Because as a mother, so she does a lot of intervention. Yes, it's for them as a student, as, as a mother. Every day in the week, if you leader has to visit Logan, no less than three times in the week. You say if, if not at all, every week she does what? Three times a week. She goes there three yes, times a week. Sure that they are, they are, his, his children are living well. Uh, so whatever they are saying, it's on their own man. Apart from what they are saying. We have every every year. If you apply, if the person apply, you want scholarship, he will get it. If you don't Wait, apply, you are saying there's a scholarship scheme in Sweden by for MP. all schools, for all, regardless of your NDC or MPP, he, he almost five times. The scholarship is it irrespective of? Irrespective of once you are University of Ghana student, you are Texas student, at or whatever, come you, apply, you, you will get it. You will be a beneficiary. Yes, no, are, you you a are you in a position to tell me? Are you in a position to tell me how many beneficiaries? We don't have particulars. We don't have particulars. It's she's a mother for all. She does. So there's nothing you can do. Okay. The issue about student, student policy, the issue about student policy intervention. The gentleman comes here because if you take a look at the voter population, or in excess of 120,000, and then the resident population of the constituency is just a little over 75,000 and growing. That means that a chunk of that population up to 120,000 may be students. They are temporarily resident. What type of intervention do you think is needed ideally for the students to live better on campus and around? Because they are complaining about residential issues and then the school fees, be able to live comfortably on campus on livelihood. Well, thank you so much. I think that's why the first thing we are going to do is to address the accommodation issue. Accommodation and that's very important. Issue. And so the accommodation issue is something that is dear to my heart. Um, I don't think ever since she became member of parliament, she's been able to even construct one room hostel for any of the students or even for the university campus, which is wrong. What I'll do is as soon as we come to power, we are going to address the accommodation issue. That's the first one. The second one is the fees. That's how come John Dramani Mahama and the NDC, we are saying that we're going to give out free academic freeze. For the Were you years. instrumental in that policy very instrumental, production? Yes, very instrumental, yes. Because so, you, you, you saw the problems of the students yes, first time, yes, yes. and so you proposed that? Exactly. Okay. And hopefully, if that goes well, which we know it will go well, hopefully we'll extend it to second, third, and fourth years. Remember, every policy of ours is progressive. It is not instant because we want quality, not quantity. And so if you are able to go through the first year, we'll do the second and third and fourth year. But the most important thing for us is to construct a lot of accommodation facilities across uh, Ayawasu West Wagon. In fact, affordable accommodation facilities for students across Ayawasu West Wagon. And I'm going to be very instrumental with that. Okay. Now, I, I think I was here, right? Let me take two here, then I take two here. No, Elijah, I'll come to you. Don't worry. Well, well, well deserved. Well deserved. You, you, Alaji, you talk. Don't worry at all. And then, Dan, you are Daniel, right? Daniel, David, David, King David. Don't worry, King David. Mr. Mr. Police. 
Mr. Police, uh, Sergeant. Sergeant. Um, please, your name. What are the issues that you want to articulate? Okay, so thank you very much. Please, get My closer to the is... mic. Raise the mic for yourself. Very good. What's okay, your name? Okay, so thank you very much. My name is Apia Dankwa Prince. Apia Dankwa I'm Prince. I'm known as Political Prince. Apia Dankwa Prince, also known as Political, Political Prince. Prince. Yes. Political Prince, go ahead. I am a student of University of Ghana. I am, I am, I am not too sure that the guy who came to speak is a student of University of Ghana. Why am I saying this? I am saying this because there are a number of, of students that MP has given scholarships. There are students here who can attest to the fact that MP has given scholarships to them. These are all students of University of Ghana. Are you a beneficiary of the scholarship? Yes, I am a beneficiary of MP scholarship. I have received money from MP. These of, are a number of, of students you backing me. From Atraco, University of Ghana, even to ATU and others, MP has been supporting them. Recently, when students were going home, it took the MP to organize buses for them to go home. And so this is something that the MP has been doing. And so that's also, a scholarship. Also, and I want you, to ask John Dumelu. I want to ask John Dumelu. Why did he lie that he had that contract as um, a reading room at Hillel Iman Hall? He lied that he has helped construct Hillel Iman conference room. You say you want to ask him what? I want to ask him that. Why did he lie that he came to renovate Hillel Iman Hall? He posted on his social that media channel. Hillel Liban Hall. Yes. He lied that. That he came to renovate. That he hall. came to renovate it. Yes. Okay, I will ask on, him. On his social media channel. That is it. Also, with regards to accommodation and the school fees, it is very, very unfair. I have come to know that the NDC do not know anything. I want to educate them. University of Ghana is autonomous, independent. No government can incite them what to do and what not to do. And so, the University of Ghana, like other autonomous. public institutions, is autonomous. Yes. So there's no government that can detect to them the structure of their school fees. Yes. And then I want to also educate them that before academic fees is being approved, it goes to Parliament. Parliament has to approve it. And so I want to educate them that what they are saying, they do not know. They do not know what they are saying before academic fees have been approved. So you want to put it to them that yes. all the proposition to the student, they don't know what they are saying. Yes. And then, Political press. And then, Thank please, you very much. Please, I beg you. I beg Thank you. you. It should be on record. It should be on record that Parliament approves academic fees before it comes out. And so he and then his other colleague MPs are in charge. All right. One more comment here. Who is there? The mic. Who has a mic? Who has a mic? Okay. What? Hajia, what do you want to say? I'll go. Hajia. Hajia Kasa. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. Hey, Pacho. You are from my eyes. You are from it's a Westland. We are a member of Westland. Now, how are you there? 16th October 2022. Mali di abahonum. Ani eba kasa ya se ya untu abamano. Obi se ya di ya shushe. Ya chani se. Christian Village Bridge no. Oka kwe between Westland. Eh how e? Is your car a fire hole ina? No see me ya kaya mo. Oba ba be siwa ma e. Yashama Lidi and Nimusa Wamba, John Dimelo Subaye, and then year 20, 16 October, or by the year 20, San Siono, eh, Haye, John Dimela and Pupuniti, and Okofa Caterpillar, or the Bessie, Guadumu, or Sati Otian and Mali de Bacatan, say, on Jaiti, or no, or Jaima, or my Jaiti, your Jaiti, we are also, or no, so it's me and Ba, and Bambetim. All right.
Agu! Agu! Me for my child, me and me tonight here, from me Rashid, Kwame Owusu. If you're here, I'm here. If you're here, I'm here. If you're here, I'm here. My real school for the past eight years. You said what? My real UCC. I completed UCC about eight years ago. About eight years ago. I couldn't find a job. Thankfully, I was able to apply to a job internationally. So as it stands now, I work remotely. My colleagues I work with, who are in the US and Canada, they keep asking me, I mean, why is it that so much unemployment in your country? From 2012, I am apolitical. I neither support the NPP nor the NDC because I am tired. I am 30 years now. I am 30 years. My colleagues who are 30 years abroad are doing way, way, way better. If we keep playing politics in this country, MPP, NDC, where are we going? I am 30 years. In the next four years, I'll be 35 years. And we keep playing like this, where are we going? I am talking to a young man and woman here. The reason I am talking today, it's just last Sunday. A colleague I completed the university with, at about 10 p.m., he called me, Rashid, I have not eaten today. If you don't help me, I can't sleep. I asked my friend to send him 200 cities. My colleagues over there, they do mobile money. I asked them to send him 200 cities. So you're worried cities. about the current economic I'm situation? I'm worried about the current economic situation. And you are tired. Which has bedeviled the unemployment in this situation. The youth over here, all of you, you keep playing politics. Me, I am very much concerned about my future and that of my generation. What do you I think? I want a fair play for everybody to play. I want all of us to have an equal access to the national cake. Okay. It's going to be MPP and this. What are we doing? Let me ask you. Why do you think the country is headed by way of the direction? We are already in a ditch. Roland, we are already in a ditch. And for me, I am not doing MPP and DC. I'm tired. I am tired. This is where I stay. Almost every day, you people do come have rallies here and campaigns. I have never stepped out of this house to come and talk. But today, I am talking because of what my friend called me on Sunday to say. I am so mad and so angry. What is going on? Are we going to do MPP, MP, MPP, and DC? We keep playing blame games. We keep playing blame games. All right. Till when? Till when? You've made Till your when? point. You've made your point. Till when? Till when? Till when? Till when? Till when? You can't hear. Can you hear me now? You can hear me. You cannot hear yourself. Talk into the mic. You will hear yourself. Two, two, all right. two. Please increase the increase the the volume for him, man. Uh. In, increase right. the pot. Thank increase the so pot. Thank you so much for this opportunity. But all right. I would want to ask a question. Why would you think that? Although we are on vacation, students would leave their various homes to come and support my leader. I would want to ask Honorable John Dumelo a question. He was talking about accommodation. How is it going to help students on campus? Because we, we started ranting about accommodation, not now, not today. So how is he going to go about that? Talking about subsidizing of school fees, how is he going to go about that? He and I know how the vice chancellor is. So I'm asking him a question, how is he going to go about it? Because we are tired. Oh, also, you gave, him, you gave him an opportunity to tell us what he has done. He was refuting, he was rebutting what my leader has done. I don't think it is in his position to do that. You are here to sell yourself. You are not here to speak down on somebody. So I want him to go back home, to go and do his correction. Thank you very much. There, there was a concern. They said, you said you were going to renovate uh, political praise. Hilal Imanho, did you say that? And then, and then um, they said you said it on social media. And then address the issue the about the what influence you can have. Knowing that the university is autonomous, it has set its own structure, 
or the items on the fees list in terms of improving or reducing the burden for students? The second one is, what influence do you think you can have? Because the university is an auto autonomous body. And so if you, if you are blaming Lydia Al-Hassan, what do you think your impact can, can be? So they say you say you are constructing or you are renovating Hila Liman Hall. I'm oh, told it's on oh, social oh, media. Oh, okay. John Dumelo, okay. respond to this. So, so let, me, let, me, let me respond to the, first, the second one. Please about, do. About um, the influence about um, the member of parliament first and foremost you're a member of parliament you go to parliament to make laws you go to parliament to lobby i have never heard lydia lobby or talk against anything with regards to foundation or fees on legal campus now when you go on the floor of parliament you can introduce a private member's bill and address issues she's done none of that that's the first one and so, as an MP, you can lobby for the fees. You can argue and say, the fees are too much. Let us reduce it. The fact that university bodies are autonomous doesn't mean that it's a member of parliament you can lobby. That's the first one. The second one is about renovation of Liman. I can confidently tell you that I have, listen, I can confidently tell you that I have CCTV footage of Liman executives coming to my office almost midnight on the 29th of July to come and ask me for support. I have CCTV footage of Regan. I have CCTV footage of the four of them who came to my office they came to, to beg me to ask me that they wanted me to help them renovate. I have CCTV footage of them coming a week after to my office to come and ask me for support. And so I don't want to release those footages. The second one is that we were supposed to commission, we were supposed to commission the Liman Hall a day before. I came there the day before. I met the hall master. I met Regan and everybody, and they apologized that John, we cannot commission it today. And so come tomorrow. And so that's how come I was invited. And if they dare me, I can release all those footages of them coming to my office to come and beg me. And so what? When they reached out to Lydia, nobody, nobody helped. When they reached out to Lydia, Lydia didn't mind them. Okay. All right, point B. Um, so, Hello? going forward, knowing that we have a lot of the voter population, 75,000 above, up to 120,000, um, what will be the further impact? Because already you are saying Lydia Al-Hassan does a lot for the students. Accommodation, and then lessening the burden of them when it comes to their standard of living, their fees, etc. What is the counter proposition by Lydia Al Hassan, your team, for these students? The number, I think, over 40,000. Yeah. So thank you very much. First of all, I want to expose the NDC candidate that he's, he's always lying. One, the Limao Hall was not renovated by him. It was renovated by Honorable Lydia. The only contribution he made was to provide a 1.5 air condition horsepower, okay, so he which is amounting to 4,000 cities. Okay. Because Honorable Lydia thought that was a bit very low. She didn't even want to publish it. But he even, because of the 1.5 air condition, he went ahead and posted it on, on social media. As if he's the one who renovated the... the, the, the so the so you were expecting that he should have only posted what he contributed? Yes, he contributed 1.5 horsepower. Meanwhile, the, 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 the reading room was renovated by Honorable Lydia. Secondly, I want to expose him. School fees, school fees are, not, are not being lobbied at Parliament. School fees are lobbied with the academic board. It is the academic board's responsibility to make sure that all regulations, all whatever activity is going on on campus that is, is being established by the University Academic Board. It is not being lobbied at Parliament. So therefore, what Honorable Lydia can Say do, that again. school fees and other fees are being lobbied at academic board level, not at parliament. Okay. They have SRC that are also part of the board, that are also part of university leadership. Okay, so those are the people who has, who has oversight responsibility for education. It's that, the Minister of Education, okay. but so, the school is autonomous. So do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? 
whatever you feel on that. So do you agree that the member of parliament, Lydia Al Hassan, has a colleague, education minister, who has supervision over the university, its board, etc.? University of Ghana is not as ordinary as all the, the places that they are autonomous. We they all autonomous. understand. The, the minister has his level. I, I'm, I'm asking of about supervi supervisory power. That's what I'm saying. They are being supervised by the academic board. Okay. But the minister of education has an oversight responsibility on that. Okay. So he's, he cannot impose his views on the university board. That is true. You understand? That, so is therefore, why, that is why the word is about lobbying. You don't impose saying. your views. That's what I'm saying. If she has done that and they did not accept, the only thing she can do is to solve that issue by initiating her own policy, by instituting a scholarship scheme, which she has done about 5,000 scholarships on campus. So you're she saying that what she's able to do is that yeah. because the university is autonomous, go ahead. Yeah. So she what has, I can do is she, to support, support with scholarships. With scholarships and provide them with reading materials and learning materials, laptops and other things. To make sure she, she even gives laptops. laptops. Yes, Lydia has provided laptop to most of the students to aid their, their academic perf performance. You understand? He again lied that the, the hospital was built by the NDC. And that is a palpable lie. That hospital. I think what he said was that it was started under the attack. It was a lie. That land was bought physically cash from the packet of late Honorable Ejaku. Uh, and, Imano, and, Imano Imano Jaku, and that was supposed to be used for cheap compound. And when they started the project, when Honorable Lydia came, she realized that that place is too, the hospital is too small for the community. So she lobbied and had additional funding to make sure they expand it to a hospital level. Okay, so time we had Lydia the Alassan came to meet a cheap compound. A cheap compound. On okay. And she made it, she lobbied to expand it to a hospital level. That is how come we have a 20 bed hospital at that place. Has it, been, has it been commissioned already? It will be commissioned by the end of this month. End of we this are month. preparing for the accreditation from Ghana Health Service so that we can be able to do it. Okay. I am telling you, oh. in the issue of unemployment, Honorable Lydia has employed a lot of youths in various jobs, police, military, or whatever. She has employed a lot of youth. She has given them capital to start their own business. She has provided 11 Uber cars. 11 Uber cars to the youth to make sure they work and pay, which are some of the initiatives to solve the unemployment issue. Honorable Lydia has provided a lot of incentive to the people, a lot of development to the people. So therefore, she stands a chance of developing this, this community than the NDC candidate. First of all, when he, when he, Dumelo, when he lost in 2020, he left to a different constituency because he didn't believe in the people of Ayawasu. He left a different constituency until he was sacked from there that he came here. So therefore, I want to tell the people of Iowa so that the one that believes in you, the one that has hope in you, is Honorable Lydia Sena Malassan. She's solving the unemployment issue. She's solving the unemployment issue. She's solving all the unemployment issue. All the sanitation problem, she's solving it in the constituency. You see hospitals, you see roads, you see uh, the cheap compounds, you see you, a lot of drivers. You see driver's lenses by the youth All right. of this constituency are provided with a lot I've of I've been signaling lenses. for you to stop. Thank you it's very okay, much. Alaji. Thank you. Okay. I'll take two years. I'll go two years, two years, two years, then I'll count one, one. So two, your name. Mede Nana Kofi Amponsa. Yeah, Frau Nana Kofi Amponsa. Nana Kofi Amponsa, yes. Uh, 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 enough is for uh, English. Uh, Maybe. Who uh, bought Baswana as a old cancer? Who bought Okay. Uh, as a citizen, I'm mayor of my papa. I want to tell John Domelo, as an aspiring candidate, I will be paswedi. Okasa I a threat, 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 threat. Let me tell John Domelo something. Me, yani a threat desert is on nom Johnson. Besides, say we nom Johnson da. Besides, John Domelo say we nom Johnson da. Enough of your threat. Enough of your threat. And one day, Moki go go to market. He no go come back again. So I almost threat, threat, you know. And pay for the cash threat, 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 threat. I'm sorry, I no move, no move, no nipa no. One day, John Domelo, Moki go go to market. He no go come back again. Who, who go ukrom? Who go do a money buy? Papa Ocho, ukrom for so much. Papa Ocho, Oba Hano, Oyi Obia. Into na also member member ya no member sa David.
Kofi Kofi Tobo. John Dumelo Obahano, David. John Dumelo Obahano. On Yobia. Yeah, cut and Nasem. Me patch up, me patch up, me patch up. Me patch up, Tobo, 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 Unti mimi mbeji na ho, enye yano, enye, enye, enye kasa papa, enye kasa papa mpacho. Why? Why? Oh, enye kasa papa. Why? Rebe de debi. Ye nyi na, eye, debi, tobo. Ye nyi na, ye nyi na, eye amanyo osem. Enye adia ese, yebe ka kasa fi, ene sa anyabano. Wawo nye mwenye. Inche no, mepacho o kasa anye. Eye, wewe, 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 debi, 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 debi. Eye, wewe. Ma, ma, medasi, medasi, meda. O kasa nye, o kasa nye, mpacho, mpacho. Oba hano onyi yobia, dabi, dabi, dabi. Mpacho, who is the next person? Who is the next person? Kofi, aye, 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 aye. Matthias here, aye, aye. Who is coming next? You are coming again. Can't no. Let's give the opportunity to another person. Dabi, uh, that's Ken. You are Ken. Yes. Ken Amwa. No, no let's give the opportunity to another person. 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 Give the opportunity to another person. Dabi, 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 Dabi. Let's let us play by the rules, okay? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you very much for the opportunity given to me. My name is Andrew Solomon Amo. My name is Andrew Solomon. What's your name? My name is Andrew Solomon. A student of Accra College Solomon. of Education. Yes, okay. please. Level 300 students of Accra College of Education. Yes. Solomon, continue. Yes. Okay. Talking about the developmental project, our honorable MP is doing. When I go to my school, look at my institution, Accra College of Education. She has produced that space. Our uh, chairman didn't even talk about that one. She has produced number of dustbins, ceiling fans for all the rooms, the classrooms and then the dormitories. She has produced ceiling fans for all the classrooms, including all the dormitories, the auditorium. And then secondly, talking about scholarship, I am a beneficiary of Mama Lydia's MP scholarship. Yes, I applied in level 200 and I'm now in level 300. She paid my school fees full, level 200. She paid level 300 school fees in full. I'm now in level 300, going to level 400. And then the scholarship is in a way that there will be free opportunity for everybody to apply. You understand? It's not about your political affiliation, whether you are NDC, you are MPP. They will open the portal for you to apply. And then getting it does not depend on your political affiliation. I am a beneficiary of the Mama Lydia scholarship. Last semester, when we went on vacation, I stayed at Marquesim. Mama Lydia took our bill. Can I continue? So are we? No, I'm not that. Who are we? We are talking. You are not listening. No, you are speaking into the mic. So. Okay, so, talking about transportation. Last semester, when you went down on vacation, when you went down on vacation, personally, I stay at Mankesi. Yes. You live at Mankesi? Yes, please. Mama Lydia gave us transportation free. Those going to Tamale, Kumasi. When you are on vacation? Yes, free. She provides buses? Buses for free. Transportation? Free transportation. And that scholarship, right from level 200. I've been you, on scholarship. You have yes, a scholarship. Personally, yes. From Accra College of Education. No, don't, don't remove your yes. dress. I've been oh, on scholarship okay, for two years, two academic years. And then the scholarship is in such a way that it's not about your political affiliation. The open portal for you to apply. And this is students in my school are even having scholarship. You know of, uh, you, you know of uh, how do they call them? Uh, yes, yeah. yes. You know they are members. So both they have got and they Yes, are... yes. I went for vetting. I went for vetting, scholarship vetting, with a 10 member. And he's now having scholarship under Mama Lydia. So if you are telling me he has not done anything, it's totally wrong and you are totally lying. So what I'm saying is that she has done some and then we should give her an opportunity to continue what she's doing. Thank you. Yeah, Medinde, Alex. Me pese Udin di Alex kasa, Alex Okay pese me kasa kakra Ba jo beti mi akasa Pese me kan eti eti ani se Ayawa so west wagon Ayawa so west wagon Ya to aba since 92 
Since 1992, and the Many to us, many campaign. Yeah, 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 me pese me bisa ye MP ni se Fi samri na be pemu ne e den na wetumi aya fasa de no e na de nsu na wo de atutu akwan so se sa de no e bi si bi o e fi se e ne ye ya ba ha no wo mu ma ye instructions bi na nsu no akwa se se bi openina obedie ni maka kire Oh, Musor in Fria, Mumas in Fatina, not assume you Emrano. I near Duma Sadiano, a cross near the Koi Legina. It's a Ose, a Yaya, sir, Openi, any Fia Openi, if ye, um, Usro, sir, near see a twenty nineteen, no, yes, as a of into Toya, a woman, Muntino, a bet me a CPO man. I bet you Bruta. Say you, I bear brutal. If you say, me maintenance is said, but me bet you on a no, more journalist, me the sa, I'm your asset. And yet, no one for me, bet you, not me, Jinawa, and Robert Kumi. Made us it. My name is William Addo. William Addo? Yes. What's, what's your issue? Are you also a student? Yes, I, Are you a student? No, I'm a graduate from Game Park. But you live in the constituency? Yeah, I live okay. here. What's, what's the issue? The youth of Iowa so West constituency. We are highly disappointed in Lydia and Hassan as our MP. This government has been imposing taxes on us. And Lydia was a deputy chief whip when the better tax was implemented. She was also the deputy chief whip when she was also the deputy chief whip when the e levy was also implemented on us. So the youth are highly disappointed in her. And we are going to vote against her whether rain or shine. Thank you. Forget about them. You're, 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 you're on camera. Please talk. Okay. What, what, don't look at what is happening here. Just talk. Because the camera. See yourself on television. See yourself. See yourself. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you're yeah. on television. Talk. Your friend is Amodia, popularly known as Agenda P. Now, in fact, moderator, I am highly disappointed in you. Me, I'm highly disappointed in you. Adentia. Me, black. Bra, cast a good mic in him. Cast a as a woe, a woe cast a good mic. Yeah, me bra John de Melo, a cassa, honorable Lydia, and a cum in the MP. I was a cap by this time, Kagana police, Kama Pekano, I didn't know. Because evidence depends on what I saw Timidicas asked him. 
Daniel. What's I'm your Daniel. name? I'm Daniel Niimati. Okay, Mr. Mati. 
Yeah, I'm a graduate from the University of Ghana. Okay. A University of Ghana but graduate. University of Ghana. What did you study? What I, I studied political science. Political science. I, I I can say that I'm very very disappointed in Honourable Lydia. To be honest. Why? As a cabinet minister, today uh, followers are talking about threat to John Romero. That John Romero has been given threat. As we are standing here, Ghana police is aware. The woman in the house over there has threatened me that she will deal with me. Why? Because she was doing something illegal on campus. She was threatening students on campus. She was going around, the one in the red cap. She was going around telling University of Ghana students that if you are not supporting Lydia and you are campaigning against Lydia, she will make people come after you. Police, that this, man is, this police man is my witness. She was attacking me. Lydia that we are talking. She does nothing for us on So what, you are disappointed in her? I'm disappointed in okay, Lydia. Okay, but let myself. me ask you. Um, I, I've had Shirley. Shirley uh, say that even some of your members, whether Tain or Tescon, they get scholarship from Madame. We Lee. don't get any scholarship. Lydia doesn't give any scholarship on campus. Are you sure? She doesn't give any scholarship on campus. She only comes around with us. Sherry Kivo Gary rice. That's what she does. They should ask Lydia. She just come to give Gary she rice. She comes to give Kivo Gary rice. I have the videos on my phone. She doesn't do anything. They are saying today, honorable Lydia doesn't have interference on campus. I can tell you the number of people Lydia calls to threaten her to do her bit. The Lehman issue they are talking about. I was the one that led the legislative executive to John Dumelu. They came to ask him for funds. Lydia told them. Lydia told them that she's not available. It's okay. It's okay. One more, one more. They will, will come and close. One more, they will close. No, you are done. I'm not done. You are not done. I'm not done. Okay, conclude. As I'm continuing. It was you are not continuing, you are concluding, my boss. Okay, so, second one, second one. We have Lydia, Sarah Malassan as our MP. She was the deputy chief whip. When a lot of when a lot of policies were being implemented, we will be on TV and watch it. She doesn't even attend parliament. I went to parliament house during my service. No, you are not a member of parliament. So I'm you can yeah, so but I, did you know, no, I did my service. No, I did my service at parliament that. house. I did my service at parliament house. You did your service yes, at parliament house. I was a member of the I was I was an intern at the Parliamentary subsidiary and legal communication. That's why I did. So you did your service in Parliament. Yes, I did my service okay. at Parliament House. I'm always at Parliament House. See, that didn't even attend city. You're from Felicia Bruce. It is rather unfortunate. It is rather unfortunate, sir. Lydia Hassan Wamba Hassan. Okay. You're from Felicia Bruce. It is rather unfortunate. You're from Felicia Bruce. Okay. Unit committee member. It is rather unfortunate, sir. Lydia Hassan Wamba Hassan. Fat, now can we be sunny, sir? Are you MP for all? So I am before MP before Uncle. I must say, I want your Bibia. Bibia, that in a day. What can I say? Who say it is possible? You have been in government for more than two terms, and you are telling us right now that it is possible. Who can say it is it's possible? It's is it true that you receive support from Lydia Lassan? Pardon? Do you receive support from Lydia Lassan? It is never true. He doesn't even know me. Do you, do you have a picture with her? Lydia, if you know me, if I ever come to you, you prove it to your people. Because I have never taken Madam, a Madam, no foul language. I'm, I'm asking you, have you received support from Lydia last Not at all. Not even a damn. What are you talking about? She collects what? What are you talking about? Hey. What is she talking about? What are you talking about? All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So conclude for me. Conclude. Are you done? Are you done? Are you done? Listen. Lydia and Hassan should create jobs for the youth. We are here suffering. They talk about limousine. He buy personal cars for them and forgetting about all. So please, when he... You are a big liar. Stop it. Stop it. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay.
you are not done. What she's doing? Want to tell Lydia is that he's giving money out to people. He's giving money out to people to vote for him. If he has really done the job, why is she selling his vote? She is selling her vote. Tell her not to sell her vote. It is possible. She should not sell her vote. Tell Lydia not to sell her vote. Thank you. All right. Okay. All right. No. No more. No more. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. No, I did. I did two. The first one and the second one. Let's be fair. I want to conclude your discussion, please. I want to conclude your discussion, please. Now going forward, we just have less than three months of the election. When August, September, October, November. And then we have seven days to the election, right? Now, going forward, what is the message to the constituents? Um, King David, you are King David, right? Yes, yes. I, I, I want to clarify something. No, you can go ahead. You have five minutes. Hello. This is, this is publication from uh, Limam disputing the fact that Mr. Dontimelo said that he actually um, help in renovation the place. Okay, let me see. Yeah, so... Continue. So, so, first of all, I will want to speak key for the hearing of our citizens. I believe that... So this, key, one, this one is issued by the JCR. Exactly. So, I will catch you again for Sir, Abaya, Waba. It says that he contributed an air conditioner. Does he entitle him to be part of the inauguration? That's it. Continue. So going forward, what's the conversation? So the promise to the people. Okay. We are not Ghana. Ghana Now Ghana for Policies now, you are the buyer. No, Obidia, you are empty. I know Obidia, your papa. MPP, the ano. Oh, MPP, the ya, ya, ya. I've been inside. You are the Zongo Development Fund. I buy ya, eh, ya, Juma. Now, so you are the one who am saying, I'm working county. I'm asking for first Zongo Development Fund. I did about a moment in first of and it's already in progress. And then I buy ya, or your current. Yes, I can digitalization. Now, almost you are moving in me, and now they are ending the fourth year. Say, say, digitalization, air consumer, a babua, and your mother, Jania, Yadanya. That's the way forward. I just yeah, share and you mapa, yeah, yeah, in terms of roads. I am so well, so gone. I have 85 percent of our road asphalted under the MPP. Yeah, can't come and say. A Pokwasi interchange to Insawam is going on an expansion. Yaka Dodowa Road, Adanta Dodowa, Yaka Kaswa to Cap Coast, a Koso, Yaka Tama to a Flower Road, a Koso. What now evidence are? Any sir, or be back at your side, and you might have PPI any. Yeah, yeah, figures. Yeah, yeah, the fight figures and there, yeah. Answer na John Dramani Mahama be free so no. The state of the nation address. Okay, chia gana four se. Ni kwa ya waje na ya three thousand nine hundred and something. And now me ni mo kasi. Gana kwa ya 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 twelve thousand kilometers all presidented in the history of Ghana. Yes. Let's have one minute. Me no kasi bi omo no. Aya asu wa se ya. The number one motor school in the whole of Africa. Yes, it will be the number one in Africa. Stop school. Yeah, Baba Tiani can call her. Saoya Wufua. Tiana Tiami. Your school free education now. Don't mama say any no. And now I see what you know. And call her. Omunya award. Our engineering mono. Aya and call her. Muko free education. And it's our Amamu and it's our Chia and people who are my and it's your Samo Ghana for your Batna Hai. Who would your all kind issues? Who would your all kind of cry and are your old intro? And you see, Edna Oma and Tro, Yara John Dimano Edna Oma and Tro, and people, no cry, Yamish Samo. So 
No, one person. One person will talk. Five minutes. I give you one person, five minutes, no interaction. I'm not taking any more views. That's all right. Five minutes. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, what, what is the message going forward to the constituents and the voters? You have over 120,000 voters. What are you telling them? Thank you. John Dramani Mahama is coming back to reset Ghana for jobs and prosperity. That is what we believe in as a constituency. Fellow constituents of Ayawato West Wogon, John Santo Dumelo stands for you. He has a lot of activities in place. One, we have poor drainage system in Ayawato. John Dumelo is bent on resolving the poor drainage system. Secondly, through His Excellency John Ramani Mahama, hostel accommodation for tertiary institutions. John Dumelo will partner His Excellency to ensure that Lego students, Jimba students, and Atraco students will have a befitting hostel. And at the end, the first years will also enjoy the academic fee free. Secondly, we want to assure you that His Excellency and John Santa Dumelo is coming to provide a community day school for the people of Ayawaso that is rather assured we are going to do it. The next thing that we are going to do is to ensure that employment is created through apprenticeship for the youth. A lot of our youth, after JSS, we know them, we have their data. We are going to ensure that His Excellency Apprenticeship Program, John Santo Dumelo, will be involved to ensure that these youth are registered. We will give them training, give them capital to start, and equipment to start their business. This, John Dumelo, is assured we are going to do it. My fellow constituents, a lot of voters are not in Ayawato. Lydia Lassan brought people all over the country. We are appealing to you, come on December 7, come and vote for change, a change that will bring prosperity, a change that will enhance the future, a change that thank every you. Ghana, thank you. Ghana will help share in thank it. You. December thank 7 you. is a game changer, and every Ghanaian must be part to ensure that John Bahama, Professor no, no, John thank you very much, and John Sato de Mello is elected to lead the All so, right. Thank you. Thank you all for coming through here. Thank you. Now, it's OK. It's OK. We've stopped. We're closing. Thank you all for coming through here. We've been here at Ayawaso West Wagon. Just um, after the Biolation School, you come closer as if you're heading towards um, American, is it American House? Yeah, thereabouts. You won't get to the junction. We've been having some great conversation. I, I tell you that the atmosphere hasn't been easy from when we began till the time we're ending. This is a, co a constituency that certainly we have to look out for when it comes to December 7, 2024. As your election command center, we, we're happy. We also commend you for joining us for this edition of Community Manifesto. But live right here from the Ayawaso West Wogon constituency, it's been a delight having you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much as well. We hope to come your way again with another edition. Bye-bye.